Okay, everyone, welcome to week one. So, what we want to do is hit the learning activities, which is what I'm in now. My uh, Blackboard is always going to look slightly different from yours as an instructor, but all the material will be in relatively the same place. So, if you go ahead and click on week one, this week we're talking about what is art, what is visual culture. So, this is our first introduction to the course. Now, yours will have this table of contents here on the left as well. The only difference here is that mine, and I don't know why they don't do this for years, I can view all of the week's learning activities all in one go. You just have to click on each one as it comes in order to pull up that learning activity. And I'm sure most of you are familiar with this. I'd just like to go over that in case we have students who are new to ops. And I only do that during week one, hopefully. Okay. So each week I'm going to post an agenda, like I've said, noting all the assignments, materials, or any changes to the week's activities. Uh, and I will also post an, a video agenda, which is what I'm recording right now. And these are really important because often I'll give hints or important information or just go into things in a little more detail. Uh, so I really do expect that you watch them. I, every session that I teach, I will get students sending me an email of something that I went over in detail in the video, and I will just say, hey, did you watch the video? So make sure that you do that. It will save both of us time there. So week one, we have our, uh, we're going to read, we're going to view, we're going to reflect, we're going to create, and we're going to review. And I try and follow that format each week. Sometimes we'll have write in there as well. Usually you'll have either write or create uh, that you'll be working on. So our first week's reading activity that we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to start in that looking at art text. The looking at art textbook is really more of an overview. It's, it's a text that I use for the art appreciation class as well. And I like this because since our class has no prereqs, and I can't expect that any of you know anything about art, and yet we're an upper division course, uh, this text really helps us to kind of uh, get those basic ideas down to broaden our vocabulary, and that's really what we're going to be working on this week, kind of just thinking about this whole idea is what is art after all? It's kind of this big autonomous word uh, that has a lot of meaning attached to it. It can be a very hot topic to debate. And so we're going to start to deal with that a little bit. You're also going to be reading in your visual culture text, just the intro, pages one through eight, and uh, then chapters one, chapter one, pages one through 34. So the looking at art text, really quick read. I know you think, oh my gosh, this is so much reading. There's a lot of pictures, it's big text, it will be really quickly quick to get through. I always recommend reading that looking at art first each week and then dive into the visual culture, which is a, a more intense text. And yes, uh, it's, it can be a hard text at times. Sometimes I have students say, gosh, this is a really hard book for this type of class. But you know what? We shouldn't be afraid of dealing with hard material. If you don't feel like you understand everything, that's okay. I'm completely fine with that. Ask me questions. And what I do for that text, not for the looking at art text, but for that text, I try to give you a little bit of an outline each week of what I would want you to look for and just ideas to kind of be watching for as you read that. So you may want to read through these first. So it's going to talk about what is a visual text, uh, that the concept that a visual, te visual texts are read with the same rigor as written text, that we have to learn to understand this whole language of the visual world, that symbolism is really important that these are cues that tell us how to behave uh, and or how not to behave uh, in society. And so they're really important, these visual cues. So we need to be able to uh, read as well as write visually. Uh, we need to think about why we need to be able to be visually literate, that if we, uh, if we don't understand the images and symbols that are in our culture, then we're basically uh, at the mercy of those who create it. So pictures can take over where words are not enough. You know, the proof is in the pictures, all this idea. Visual literacy is an active pursuit. It's not something that you just learn once and know forever. You have, because we know that visual culture is continuously evolving and changing. And with technology, it's very rapid now. So we have to kind of continue to understand how to read these texts if we want to be a uh, valuable members of society and active members of society. So we need to ask ourselves as well, should we be reading differently? Do we need to sometimes change our perspective to understand things more fully or more clearly? Uh, the printed word is a relatively new phenomenon, right? So images have been around for thousands and thousands of years. And so this is obviously a very important way in which we communicate. 
So in chapter one, it's going to talk about this idea of content. What is content? And it's going to talk about how we look. So it's going to give you an example of a portrait versus a landscape versus religious art. So how sometimes you have to change the tools you use or the, your mindset of how to understand these different types of images because they have different values in society as well. And those values tend to shift and change uh, throughout history. So always be looking for what is not shown as well as what is shown when you're looking at images. It's going to talk about that. I've given you a YouTube clip about the Arnolfini wedding portrait, which is an image that it talks about in that text. So I try to give you other activities. If you're having trouble understanding how what they're saying, then maybe you know watching a little clip and uh, hearing people talk about it will help that uh, help you to understand that. So uh, we definitely want to talk and listen and pay attention to this idea of this guy, Erwin Panofsky, and what he said about this idea of iconology, and this starts on page 24. So Panofsky has three levels of interpreting this whole concept of iconology, and it's the primary or natural, the secondary or conventional, the third or intrinsic. And so because this is a really important concept that's present in chapter one, we're actually uh, going to be writing a section of our theory application paper about Erwin Panofsky, I've given you a little lecture video, and I believe it's only around 20, between 20 and 30 minutes. Let's see exactly. Oh, oh no, this one's only 10 minutes. That's right, this is a shorter one. So 10 minute clip that I'd like you to watch. It's gonna go over Panofsky in more detail and give you an example. I actually walk through uh, his three levels with a, a one artwork, which is what you're gonna be doing. So that's our material for this week. Uh, you also have an extra lecture this week, and I know this is, is a lot of material to get through during week one, but again, this is about giving you that kind of foundation stone of uh, a cornerstone of, of art in this word art. And this is a really interesting little lecture. You may not agree with everything he says. You may not agree with everything you read in the text. I encourage you not to and to kind of engage with why you may or may not agree with what is being said here. So this is from the Floating University, uh, this guy Leon Botstein, and he's going to talk about this whole concept, what is art. It's about an hour-long lecture, so you can either watch the video, or I've also included a PDF link to the transcript of his whole video, and you can just read through that if you'd like as well. So whichever one you're more confident and comfortable with. Uh, and there are a couple of questions on the quiz that will deal with uh, the material that he covers. But again, this is going to be about opening our eyes, kind of broadening our perspective, making us think about this whole concept of what, what is art, this very big question. So your first journal that you're going to be doing is, again, following this guideline. I need to stop saying again and saying that over and over again. Oh, goodness. What is art to you? Uh, what is your experience with it thus far in your life? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Uh, I want to know where you're at, where you, what you feel about art. Maybe you're someone who hasn't really engaged much with it. Maybe you've taken a lot of classes before. Maybe you're majoring in art. That helps me kind of know where the class is. It's kind of a litmus test for the whole class for me to be able to tell, okay, these are things I might need to walk through a little more slowly. These are uh, places where we may have some really interesting debates going on. Uh, or this is an area where I know that we're going to excel in. So this is an important one. Again, journals are very informal, so they should uh, be the equivalent of that one page double space, 12 point font. So what I encourage you to do is to open a Word document or pages if you use a MacBook like I do, and I don't use the Microsoft Suite. Uh, pull up a page, write one full page, double space, 12 point font, and then what you're going to do is you're just going to copy and paste it right here. So when you hit the journal button, it's going to have this is going to pop up that will have your prompt again. Hit create journal entry. Give it a title. What is art? Um, whatever you want it to be titled. And then just copy and paste your entry right in here. Sometimes the formatting gets a little bit messed up. That's okay. Don't worry about that so much. Uh, and then you can just hit post entry. You do not need to attach a file. Ignore this section. And the reason is because it's much easier for me to grade these if they're just right there in the journal. And then when you want to go back and read them, you don't have to re-download that assignment. And so it's kind of just a, a quick little place 
These are very informal. They don't have to be formatted, you know, in a, according to MLA or APA. You can use first person, I, me, my, all that. So these are very informal assignments. I can tell you that if you are on topic, writing the appropriate length, and they are on time, you will be getting full credit for these assignments. So that's all you got to do in these. Uh, don't overdo it. Don't write me two or three pages and then complain to me about how much work the class is. Keep it simple. Sometimes it's harder to write in just one page what we want to say. We have to really think about our words. So just one quick page for these journal assignments. Okay, I apologize. This week's announcement is going to be a little bit longer just because uh, we're still getting into the swing of things. So you have a uh, your first create assignment that is starting this week. You're going to begin this during week one, but this assignment is not due until the end of week two. So what you're going to be doing is creating your own mini, what I call art cyclopedia, by pairing art terminology and concepts from your looking at art textbook with images that illustrate their meaning. So image examples must be from 20th or 21st centuries only because we are contemporary visual arts and culture after all. So we don't want to be looking back to the Renaissance and the Baroque and, uh, you know, Rococo and the Gothic era and medieval, all that. We want to stay away from that. We even want to stay away from the beginning of modernism in the 1800s. Uh, we really want to engage with 20th and 21st centuries only here. So each image must be appropriately cited. Go back to that writing styles presentation. I want artist name, title of work, date created, the medium, and the source. So the source is the full web address where you found the image. This assignment will be done as a PowerPoint presentation. So you can uh, either uh, uh, attach it as an actual PowerPoint, or if you'd like, you can export it as a PDF. Sometimes that helps make the, uh, the files a bit smaller and easier to upload and download. You're encouraged to use your own creativity to make the presentation of the material your own. So again, done over weeks one and two of class, you're going to give one image, uh, one, I'm sorry, one term definition and one image example for each term below. So there's 10 per week, so for 20 total. Each term definition should include one sentence of how your chosen image is an appropriate choice to illustrate this term. Don't skip this part. Often students do. Uh, you won't get full credit if you skip this part. So I'm going to show you an example below in just a second. So the first week, it's all about chapter one. Uh, I'm sorry, it's all about chapter two, the aims of art. So you will find all these terms present in uh, chapter two of the Looking at Art textbook. And guess what? You can pull definitions right out of the book. I don't even expect you to cite them. Just pull the definition right out of the text and plop it in. Uh, I'm not expecting you to make up definitions to these terms, right? So you can pull those right from there. So week one, I'd like you to do these 10. Week two, which is uh, part of our week two reading, you're going to be doing it on chapter three, these terms. I'm telling you, don't wait till the end of week two to start this assignment and try and do everything all at once. Any time that I've noticed students do that, uh, their quality of work isn't as high and they, they get really stressed out. So just pace yourself. This assignment is about time management. Maybe do one or two uh, images each night the first week and one or two each night the second week and you should be good to go. So you shouldn't have to be too overwhelmed with this. So I've given you an example here. So this would be for uh, decorating the environment to public spaces. So public spaces are decorated with architectural projects, outdoor sculptures, signs and billboards, painted exterior walls, and other expressions of urban design. These spaces convey a certain image of the city. So see how I've defined the term generally, and I took that right out of the textbook. So, and then I've given a sentence of, I've, where I've stated why Disney Hall is a good example of this term. So I said Disney Hall, for example, tells the viewer that Los Angeles is on the cutting edge of architectural design, promoting an environment of creativity and progress. So that was out of my own brain. The last one was right out of the textbook. So I've linked what is said in the textbook uh, with my little bit of critical thinking of how this image that I've chosen represents this term. Then I've given the image and I've given a citation below. So I have the artist's name who Frank Gehry is the architect in this uh, instance. This building is called Walt Disney Concert Hall. It's present in Los Angeles, California, which I would visit it if you haven't ever 
It's a beautiful building. It was built between 1999 and 2003. It's a stainless steel construction. So you can see I've basically given artist name, title of work, date created, and medium. Uh, you know, it tends to be a little bit different with a building rather than a painting or a sculpture or a photograph. And then I've given the link where I found the image. So this assignment is due at the end of week two. Don't forget that. Don't freak out and think that it's due now. But this is how I expect each slide to be formatted. If you have any questions about this assignment, do not hesitate to ask me. Okay, and then you have your review quiz. So the quiz is due at day seven. So you have one attempt to take the quiz. You don't have a time limit, but you do have to complete it all in one sitting. So a new window will pop up. So you can use your lectures, you can use your notes, you can use your textbook. But just remember, it has to be done in one go. So quiz due Sunday at midnight. Your uh, mini art encyclopedia is not due until week two. Your journal is due Sunday at midnight. And that's the only two things you've got due. Other than that, a lot of lecture and reading material to get through. Let me know if you have any questions about any of these assignments or anything that the class is covering thus far. And have a fantastic first week of class.